Welcome back to the channel and today I will be giving you every single detail of the new latest patch from Aspire for Star Wars The Battlefront Classic Collection. Will this revive the game? Is this going to make players come back? Well, let's have a look and we can all decide. What do you think? Do you think this will survive or do you think this game will die out or is it already dead? The gameplay you'll be watching in the background of this video will be recorded as of a couple of days ago after the patch went live. So we can also see if some of these patches have actually worked. As always with these type of videos, there will be a link down in the description down below for you to check out these patch notes for yourself on Aspire's official support website. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section down below and while you're at it, if you could leave a like that would be much appreciated and subscribe to the channel while you're here. Thank you for watching and enjoy the video. So here we have it, another day, another update for Aspire's masterclass of the new release of Star Wars The Battlefront Collection. There isn't much more to say about this game anymore, is there? It's been kind of a shambles since day one, but they've brought a new update out. I'm a couple of days late, but I'll still get into them and I'll go through the patch notes for you just so you can have a look and see for yourself if this game is still worth playing to this day. I've had a few comments on previous videos saying that people haven't actually bought this game, they just want to watch videos on it. That is the purpose of me making this video today, just to showcase people who don't have the game if it's actually worth playing or not. So let's look into the live play accounts on Steam. So this is Steam only. So as of recording this video, it is 1pm exactly on the 28th of April, so we're on a Sunday afternoon, so kind of prime time gaming, there are 48 players. What the hell? This game's a month old. <laughs> and there are 48 players playing this. Surely PlayStation 5 has to have more players playing, right? Okay, so I'm on my PlayStation, as you can see. So let's go into Battlefront 1. Let's start off on number 1, then go to number 2. Alright, so multiplayer. I'll just go join, so you can look at all of the servers. What? There's one player! There's one player! Oh, my screen's frozen. I cannot believe that. There is one player in the whole of this on PlayStation 5. Alright, so multiplayer. Let's just do search again. Any, this is literally every server on PlayStation 5. So we've got 13. They've updated the connection to green bars rather than the ping, if you remember. 19 players on PlayStation 5 playing online on this whole game. You know what? That's actually more than I thought. That is outrageous. So what have Aspire done to try and fix these issues and entice players back in? Well, let's have a look at the patch notes right now. So on all platforms, they have fixed an issue where there is no audio or visual feedback when clicking refresh in the server list. That actually has happened to me before, so that's good. They have fixed an issue where the enemy AI fires less frequently and less accurately. That is a massive issue because you seem to get beamed when you play offline, I swear. They fixed an issue where gameplay would fail to start and the countdown finish in a 64 player game. That has really annoyed me in the past. Fixed an issue with the lightsabers being too bright and having their colours washed out when in brighter areas. Fixed an issue with intensity of the flickering lights on Uta Power being too high. Fixed various issues around the camera shaking upon falling off the map or death. That was actually really bad because that could cause epileptic fits, surely. So moving into Steam only, they have fixed the issue that caused Xbox button prompts to appear when playing with a PlayStation controller. Fixed an occasional crash that would occur on the faction selection screen in split screen Galactic Conquest versus mode. Fixed an issue where the skip option would be not selected with the left mouse button during the Galactic Conquest. Fixed an issue where villains would occasionally not be able to spawn in on Hero Assault servers. So we're now going to get into the PlayStation ones and for me personally I have experienced all of these in the past so I am more than happy to see these have come up but let's get into them right now. So they have fixed an issue that occurred when refreshing the server list. That did happen quite a lot. Fixed an issue with servers not showing up at the time of the search is attempted. You kind of have to just refresh it now and then so that's not that big. They fixed an issue that caused a large fog wall to appear at the edge of the player's vision in the Kashyyyk map. Not actually had that before. Fixed an issue where the draw distance being lower on both Kashyyyk maps. And they've also fixed issues with players occasionally not being able to join servers. That was this huge issue as well as the actual issues on the servers themselves. So. It's, it's just a mess, isn't it? It's an absolute mess. If you play this game on the Nintendo Switch, well, congratulations, that is literally the best platform to play on. For some reason, it's been the Switch that has had the least amount of issues. 
since release. I'm not sure why, but, but anyway, there are a couple here on the screen right now that show that they fixed an issue where the loading screen would hang for longer than 15 seconds after selecting either game on the launch menu. They also fixed an issue where the force close error would occur when disconnecting a wireless controller before loading into a game. And lastly, they fixed an issue with controller inputs not being detected when disconnecting a wireless controller and transitioning from tabletop mode with Joy-Cons to handheld mode. So that is the full list of the patch notes from Aspire on their support website, which I'll leave a link down to below. But all I would just say about this is I'm all for new patches to fix the game, but the online network just still seems terrible. So hit registration when you're trying to shoot people online just feels like you have to shoot someone 10 times just to get two hits off. But then by that point, you've been killed by somebody else on the side because they got lucky enough to hit you with their first shot. It's just unplayable it really is and it is a shame i've said this in a couple of videos before that it's a real shame that this game just hasn't popped off like it should have done i am very gutted because i loved playing this game as a kid one of my favorite ever games is the battlefront 2 the original one because i just played it for hours and hours and hours with my brother in the bedroom on split screen on the playstation 2 the nostalgia just hits hard but i just gutted it is so annoying that this game didn't pop off like it would but luckily for me recently I found a love for the new Star Wars Battlefront 2 from EA and DICE and I've been loving that game I've made some shorts about it I'm gonna be making some more videos on modding it because you don't need a really expensive high-end PC to run this game at all and it does look graphically amazing even on medium settings that's what I play it on I still get consistently around 100 frames per second and it is so fun we also have Kaiba V2 coming soon, I'm going to make a video about that. That has saved Battlefront 2. It didn't really need saving anyway, it gets consistently over a thousand players on it every single day. I'll go into more detail about that later on in a future video. If you want to see that, let me know down below and leave a like on this video. And if you've made it this far into the video so far, leave a comment saying dead game just to let me know that you've watched this far. So as for the future of this game, in my opinion, I'm completely in the dark. I have no idea whether this game will continue to work or not. By just showing in the background of this gameplay here, it's just not good. It really isn't that good of an experience, especially when you have other games like the EA DICE version that you can play that is completely seamless now and is in a really good spot, especially with modding. I want to hear from you though, I want to know if anybody who's watching this video actually still plays this game on a regular basis, or if you're like me. When the updates come out, I'll just hop on every now and then to see the current state, to see how many people are playing it. So all that's left to say is, thank you very very much for watching, if you did enjoy the video please leave a like and subscribe to the channel, and I will speak to you in my next video.